Hi everybody, it's Richard Mosdell. This is my daily V vlog number 39. And I'm sitting here in a quiet space, having come home from the club a little bit early because I uh, hurt my knee. Yep, tore it a little bit, but it'll heal. That's the life of being active. What I wanted to bring up today was my best friend in Japan, Takamasa Arakawa. Hey, Arakawa sensei, how are you? He has been one of my best friends since like 2001. We met in 1993 in Tokyo, really got to know each other from 2001 when he came to visit here, then I went over to visit there. And then in 2004, on another visit, he said, hey, I think you could actually be a karate teacher in Japan full time, if you wanted to, which I never had expected to hear something like that. So Arikawa Sensei is awesome for three things, among many others. One, he's super positive. He's probably the most positive karate person I've ever met. And in Japan, his reputation is being the most positive karate person in Japan. Number two, he is an unbelievable workaholic, but he makes it look really easy. Just, aren't you just supposed to go to a different tournament every weekend? Uh, teach 100 classes a week and drive six or seven hours in different directions to make sure you can teach different students. So for Aurikawa Sensei, it's, uh, it's motivating to see someone who's that active. Because people say to me, even today, hey, you're crazy busy. You're doing a lot of stuff. Don't you sit down and watch TV? And it's like, no, actually, I don't sit down and watch TV. But then again, Aurikawa Sensei doesn't sit down and watch TV anyway. So, um, yeah, it's kind of funny that way. I, his level of high activity helps normalize my level of high activity. Uh, I, I'll never keep up to him, of course. The third thing is because he's so active and so positive and so committed to the karate world, it normalizes the idea that you could be a karate teacher. Like it doesn't make it seem foreign or strange or, you know, what do you do for a living? I'm a karate teacher. What do you do for a living? I'm a scuba diving instructor. Well, that's fantastic. That seems normal. You don't have to feel that, oh, I need to go and become a doctor or a lawyer or something else. Follow your passion. Really dive into it. And then the people around you will benefit from it. And it's great how he makes it feel normal that being a teacher of karate full time is something that should be your profession, that you should always strive to be better. You should experiment. And he experiments a lot. And some things work and some things don't. So in 2004, he started telling me, try and come to Japan and be a full-time karate teacher. Um, so I tried, and he hired me uh, every Monday night. And then Seiritsu Gakuen uh, High School hired me full-time as their uh, head coach of the karate club. Uh, and so I was doing both. So it was just awesome to see him support me and say, like, this is something you can do. You know, in your life... You have negative voices, a lot of them in your own head. He was never a negative voice. And so he's just come to visit us twice since uh, we've been here. And just recently he had his own uh, club tournament. And I couldn't go, but some others did. And I got the program. So let me show you his face, just in case you haven't seen him. So this is Arakawa Sensei there. And Again, you can tell he's one happy guy. This is him in Sri Lanka. He gets around a lot. So they just had his uh, club's tournament. It's called Shirimizu. And moving white water. That's the cover. So they make a program for the tournament every year. All Japanese tournaments make programs. You can see this is the 29th year of the emperor, uh, March 26. There's big explanations, the draws. And then the back of a good program, they'll give history. These are dates. 18th year, 19th year, 20th year of the emperor, and different things that happened each year. And then there'll be a description of different techniques, a tight belt, and pictures of all kinds of events of the year. So if you go to Japan, you're going to be part of all this sort of stuff. 
And if you want to go for a year, go April to March, because that's the school year and the business cycle in Japan. That's when all the tournaments and everything go through. And if you ever heard me say, if you're not in the picture, you're not there, this is where you're going to get that from. And there's a report in here about him coming to Kenzen. Let me just find it. So his last trip to Kenzen, here it is. Last trip to Kenzen here in Victoria. And then talking about all kinds of stuff. We bought the martial arts university uh, karate team here. They did a homestay. They competed at the Stevenson tournament. And um, yeah. And then in the program here, at some certain point, my name is listed as the international director. I'll just click out of here. Yeah. So Arikawa Sensei and I enjoy all kinds of similar things, trying to be positive, trying to do lots of things for people, and, um, and ice cream. Absolutely. <laughs> we have a class, we train, and have dinner, and look at you, you got to have ice cream after dinner. It's like, yeah, you got to have ice cream after dinner. So I um, just want to say that because he's so positive and he works so hard, it motivates me to keep trying hard as well. And I know that for lots of the karate students who've ha seen Arikawa Sensei and uh, all the great uh, students he brings from the university, um, we'll hopefully get to see them either this September or in February. That's uh, it for my Vivalog number 39. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, next one, I'm going to be traveling on the road, so I'll fill you in on that one.